I greet you, ladies and gentlemen, as I begin this introductory lecture to uh, this master's course, um, whose name is Central Banking and Monetary Economics. Central Banking and Monetary Economics. The purpose of this inaugural lecture, or this first lecture, is to introduce the the course outline. The course outline of uh, this uh, course or module has got seven major topics. The seven major topics. The first topic is central banks, and this topic has got uh, five subtopics which are the role of central banks in the modern world, B, central bank independence principles and practice, C, the types of banks and the central bank, D, the structure of central banks, and under the subtopic, this fourth subtopic, we're going to look at case studies uh, from developing and developed countries on the structure of central banks. The fifth subtopic is central bank operations and the balance sheet. So that's the first topic. The second topic is monetary, economy, monetary policy theory and practice monetary policy theory and practice. So it's sort of like an introductory topic to monetary policy. The first subtopic is introduction to money and the financial system. The second subtopic, which is B, the role of money in the economy. C, it's monetary policy, but this time around we'll be looking at schools of thought. And then D, it's still monetary policy, but we're looking at key issues faced by modern economy. And then we move on to topic number three. Topic number three explores uh, issues such as the, it explores issues such as the interest rates, exchange rates, and monetary and financial institutions. And then topic number four, topic number three has got uh, the four subtopics, where firstly we review interest rates, and then we look at the term structure of interest rates, exchange rates and the role of financial institutions. And then topic number four is the money supply process and the stabilization policy. It also has got five, four subtopics. That's like the preceding topic, which is the money multiply, the monetary base and money supply and so on. And then topic number five, is exchange rate regimes, exchange rate regimes and policies. Topic number six, money demand, inflation, output and monetary policy. Topic number seven is business cycle dynamics and fluctuation. It has four subtopics. So it's quite a comprehensive module. As you can see, or uh, uh, as you realize from the enumeration of uh, the key topics, that I've just done. 
you can see that uh, the course outline is quite dense in terms of the syllabus material that we're going to cover. So we, you realize also from the list of topics that I gave you that uh, uh, we won't dwell much on central banking, but we'll explore the operations of central banks. So we won't dwell much on central banks as institutions, I mean to say, but uh, we'll zero in on the functions or the operations of those same institutions in a modern economy. So what I want to do without wasting time, in the interest of time, I just want us to explore uh, central banks. Want to explore central banks. Want to examine uh, what a central bank is. How can we define a central bank? because the, the name of the module is Central Banking and Monetary Economics. A central bank is an institution, it's an economic institution, which is an integral part of the financial and economic system. In many countries, that economic institution is normally owned by the government and is given by the same government functions to fulfill. These functions may include the printing of money, the initiation and the implementation of monetary policy, the land of last resort function to these to central government as well as the private sector and ensuring the stability of the financial system so some of the main functions of central banks are as follows the first function is to issue money in most countries we realize that uh, the supply of money or the issuing of money is the responsibility of the central bank in most countries if not in all countries from time immemorial central banks have carried out or have discharged the duty of issuing notes and coins and ensuring that people have got faith faith in the notes which are printed by the government. So they protect the economy or the transacting public from possibilities that exist of fortunes. So in this printing of money, the central bank is aware of its other function, which is to target low levels of inflation or to ensure price stability. So in most modern economies, it's only the central bank which is able to know the optimal levels of money printing which don't trigger inflationary pressures in an economy. And then there is the land of last resort to commercial banks function. So we know that in the ordinary run of things, when money markets are in operations, operation, commercial banks can lend to each other. But let us assume that there is tight liquidity. Because of tight liquidity, commercial banks may not be able to help each other or to lend to each other or to borrow from each other. In that case, they go to the central bank as a lender of last resort, not first resort. 
And we realized that the central bank is also a lender of last resort to the government. Government borrowing is financed by the buying and the selling, this, particularly the selling of bonds on the open market. And by bonds, we mean IOU, IOUs, like your treasury bills or your treasury notes. They are mostly called treasury bills. Those financial instruments which are used to raise money from the open market or from the money markets. So when people buy treasury bills, the central, app, the central bank is able to raise money from the same people. By people I'm referring to the private sector. It might be private individuals of high net worth, but it's usually certain corporate bodies or entities that buy financial instruments that are issued by the government. The central bank also targets low levels of inflation in an economy. In other words, the central bank uh, carries out the function of ensuring that there is price stability. This is necessary for planning, for budgeting, and for strategic management on the part of corporate entities in an economy. And step and low levels of inflation, inflation in an economy tend to attract foreign direct investment, FDI, into the domestic economy. And then the central bank also targets growth and low levels of unemployment. After achieving low levels of inflation, in most cases, the central bank tries by all means to put in place certain mechanisms that ensure economic growth and low levels of inflation. The central bank is the one which initiates implements and um, supervises monetary policy in an economy or interest rate policy. So this is done in line with government objectives. Which objectives are normally crafted by policymakers in conjunction with monetary authorities? were normally found at the central bank. And then we've got unconventional monetary policy like your quasi fiscal activities and so on. And also the central bank's other function, a very important function indeed, is to ensure the stability of the financial system so that uh, national payment systems are not undermined as it were so that they are not undermined as it were. So I can list the functions of the central bank as follows, that it's a currency regulator or bank of issue and that it issues notes and coins, as well as other financial instruments that are part of the transactions demand for money. Number two, it is the bank to the government. The government maintains its accounts with the central bank. And government programs are normally, uh, they are normally uh, supervised or managed uh, in terms of their financial implications by the central bank. The central bank is also a custodian of cash reserves in an economy. It's also a custodian of uh, foreign currencies, of forex, which are currencies of other countries. The central bank is a lender of last resort. It also supervises, provides and supervises the clearing house system for transfer and settlement within the monetary sector. 
The central bank also controls credit in an economy. The eighth function is that it protects depositors' interests. That's why in Zimbabwe, the central bank inspired the creation of the deposit protection uh, unit or firm. So the key aspect of the function of the central bank is the supervision of monetary policy in an economy. It is the the development and the initiation or as well as the implementation of monetary policy in any corner. So the central bank has got a lot of functions that it plays, ladies and gentlemen. So those are some of the major functions of the central bank. We know that when the when we look at the balance of payments or players or actors uh, in the international economy, we also realize that the central bank is quite active in international trade, in issuing letters of credit and also assisting uh, government macroeconomic policy makers to implement certain policies. Like, for instance, the customs duty, if it is collected in forex, the money is normally remitted to the central bank, except in cases where there are exceptions, where certain uh, exporters they retain either some or all of their foreign exchange earnings. So in the next lecture, I'm going to look at um, the functions of the central bank in more detail, looking at issues to do with strategy and also issues to do with policy. So, Uh, I will also uh, email quite a bit of notes on central banking. Today, I, I just wanted to introduce central banking by highlighting what a central bank is. It is the apex financial institution in a country whose major purpose is to uh, supervise the entire financial system and also to house monetary authorities in an economy. So I believe that what I've covered now is enough for the introduction. Thank you so much.